Hello and welcome to the gallery. My name is Yon, and today we will be finishing off Cursed City. Well, for now at least. <laughs> For the past few months I've been painting up Cursed City, well mainly the enemies, and uh, it's time for me to take a little bit of a break from it once I finish these three last enemies off before we go into the heroes. Having two series on the channel at the same time is a little bit confining if I have to be honest. I want to have some extra time to do various tidbits, something different here and there. Also time restraints and having this looming over me was getting a little bit unnerving at least. So we're gonna finish off these three last evildoers and then we will be taking a small break, a little bit of a hiatus. We will revisit it because I want to finish off the entire set but for now it's just gonna be these three guys and then we're gonna take a small break. Before we start painting I will have to point out all the stuff everywhere around, you know, clicking everything, checking out the Patreon. I would love to see more of you lovely folks there if I'm honest. Also, I have an Amazon affiliate store, no extra charge to you if you decide to pay from it. I get a little bit of extra kickback, and that's perfectly fine by me. But let's jump into the painting process of these three last evildoers. And this is, of course, a quick and easy paint job, as is the usual. We're starting out from the undercoat that we already put down in the video linked in the corner. It has this uh, red hue in the bottom, so this will be influencing most of the color we put down, to be honest, because we will be painting this with a lot of contrast paints. I'm starting out with Sigvald Burgundy, mainly because I love this color. It's uh, like a burgundy color, of course, so it has this kind of a rich hue to it that red doesn't really give me. So we're putting that on the pants of the main guy and the overcoats of his guards, so we get the same hue going on both uh, sets of guys. Next, uh, for his cloak and their pants, we're going in with a Creed Camo. It's maybe not as rich of a color as the burgundy, and maybe this is a little bit lacking in my opinion afterwards, but it's a striking color nonetheless. And by keeping it the same color on this guy as on the other guys, just mixing up which is on top and which is on bottom, we get the same feeling that they are interconnected in some way. Also, the green color going over the red underhue was an interesting brownish tone that I got from it. For all the leather on these guys, be it belt, boots, anything like that, I'm just putting on a simple and easy coat of rattling grime. It's a kind of a dirty brown color, and it feels fitting with these undead types. It's uh, not as red as some of the brown colors, it's a little bit more on the muddy side, but it looks darned good, I must say. Now for his white wolf pelt. We will be doing this in a few stages. I'm starting out with just giving it a little bit of a base coat of apothecary white. And this is an annoying contrast paint because it's not that powerful. You really have to shake it so it will show. We're giving that also to the fur on the hat and on their coats and everything like that. But like I said, it's a little bit of an annoying paint. So later on, we will be touching it up with a little bit extra. For the main guy's skin, we're going to use Maker's Purple mixed with Apothecary White, about 50-50. So we get this really, really pale skin, not unlike the skin that is on the vampires that we painted in video long, long, long time ago. But it gives us this really interesting pale dead skin that I really liked for this guy. However, for the other guys, we want them to look a little bit more rotting. So they have these zombified skeletal faces and beards. So I'm putting skeleton horde on the, both the faces, the hands and the beard. However, we will be touching this up with another color later on, just to give that zombie vibe going as well as the skeleton vibe that we have put down now. 
for all the wood it's fairly simple it's a wild wood we've used this on all the wood up until now and i am not going to change it for the entire set because if we have the same wood feeling on all the models we have the same stones on all the models we have the same base on all the models it will really sell the feeling of this all being in the same world now to touch up on the wolf again a little bit of Reitland Flesh Aid mixed 50-50 with Lamia Medium and just brushing that on, giving it a little bit of a warmer undertone, which I felt was kind of lacking. It felt a little bit too marbly, too grey. It felt it needed a little bit of realism to it. So just a very thin layer over the entirety of the wolf gives it a little bit of a natural feeling. However, for his hat, hair, hat, I'm guessing it's a hat. We're just putting Raglan Flesh Aid straight out of the bottle and quite a lot of it. I just want to get a small tone there. Nothing as profound as from with uh, contrast paints or anything like that. Just a small tone with hints of shades and everything like that. But we will be adding to it later. An Athonian Camo shade I decided to put on the skeletal zombified bits. Just a little bit of dollop here and there. And then when the brush is almost lo losing most of its paint, then I'm just feathering it out a little bit more. Then we get this interesting green hue to them, which uh, suggests the rottingness as well as the skeleton feeling that we had already. It's a simple enough method to get quite interesting undead skin. Now he has these gashes on the wolf. I know they wouldn't make sense to have blood in them. That box heart has blood in them. I wanted to have blood in them because it's a striking look to have that red gash right on it. And if it goes a little bit overboard, it's contrast, but you can, if you're lucky, get it out if you really move quickly. And for this, I used flesh terrors. Now for his head and the wolf, I'm starting out with Carrick Stone. The Carrick Stone is just for the headpiece, just to give it a little bit of extra depth. So I'm dry brushing a little bit of Carrick Stone on the headpiece. And then after that has, well, it's dried almost immediately. I'm going back in with a little bit of matte white and I'm going over the headpiece with the matte white, as well as dry brushing over most of the wolf, trying to find where the highlights might hit, a big, the bigger edges and everything like that. And also around the gashes on the wolf's face, because that will clean up some of the red that went maybe a little bit iffy at some points, and also make the gashes a little bit, uh, well, a little bit more profound, so they look more striking. This will also grab some of the bristles of the hair and look, make them look a lot nicer. Now it's time for metallics. And even though these guys don't have a lot of metallics, it's a quite necessary detail on them and it is all over the shop the main guy is of course has most of the golden bronze metallics and i'm putting this almost over all the metallics except the little bit of scale mail that's sticking from underneath his belt the hilt of the dagger the actual handle and the blade rest of the entire metallics on this guy will get this uh, gold uh, brass scorpion look to it and of course the other guys will have a few bits that are also in this color just to tie them a little bit better together. The shoulder pauldrons and the keys, they will all get this brass scorpion finish. And after we've done this, and it's quite quick, and if you were doing the entire set at once, I would leave all the metallics till the end for all the enemies and do them at the same time. Now we're back into the plate mail metal. I'm not using the Vallejo silver. I wanted something a little bit darker and a little bit rougher for these guys. Just trying something out. And I'm just painting that with uh, all the rest of the metallics, all the scale mail and the weapons mainly, and all the buckles of the other guys and the buckles on him. and Well, not the buckles, the buttons and the little knobs here and there with the plate mail. And when this is all done, then we can continue on to start to shade the metallics because they will need it. They're a little bit on the shiny side, if I'm honest. And to shade them, we're going to use my lovely mixture of Basilicon Grey mixed with Contrax Medium. It's about 50-50. I have a pot that was half full of Basilicon Grey, filled that Contrax Medium, and I use that for all the worn metallics that I have on these guys, on, and most guys, and terrain and everything like that. It'll tone it down and give it a little bit of an 
old and well, not that very well cared for look. We're brushing that over the weapons, uh, the steel bits, and also all the gold bits. Like I said, it'll give it a darker and worn complexion. For those holes in the weapons, I wanted to have a little bit of a rust. So a quick and easy rust I went for. Griff found orange, just around the rust, quickly wipe off the brush, apparently in my mouth, and then I'm just feathering it out a little bit and smudging it here and there, giving this little rust feeling to the entirety of the weapon, or mostly around the gashes, and it looks very nice in a quick and simple manner. Once this is all done, let's add a little bit of flavor to them, so a little bit of Nurgle's rot around the mouth of these two giant zombie guys, just so they look like they're drooling pus or something like that. Something disgusting. Something quite undead and rotten looking. However, we're going to also add some flavor to the weapons, and that's done with blood for the blood god. And when I'm putting down some blood, I want to have a story. Like, I want to have the idea what he cut right there and how it shaped the blood that's on the blade. So just don't put it willy-nilly. Have an idea of why it's there and how it came to be. It's uh, quite necessary in my opinion. And also he's a vampire, so a little dollop in his mouth drooling into his beard felt fitting. Like I said, quick and easy using very few colors and trying to find places on all the figures where we can use the same color. It gets a theme going as well as it saves a lot of time about finding new paints from the rack or something like that. Let's just jump into the reveal and see what we have in this last episode of Curse City for now. And here we have them ready, the final three models of the enemies, Radugar the Wolf and the Kosargi Night Guard. I mean, they're not complex in any way, the way I paint them, but they look darn good. They will be good enough for the table, at least, and that's good enough for most people. Thank you very much for joining me here today. There are links in the description for all kinds of stuff, social media, the Amazon store, and various tidbits. You do with it what you will. Like, share, and subscribe, and let the colors flow. But until next time, farewell.